What's up, family? Thank you for tuning in to the Dream Nation podcast. My name is Casanova. I'll be your host, and I'm excited to be bringing to you entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and trailblazers from around the world. Stay locked in with us because we're about to go on a journey that will change your life. What's up, Dream Builder? We are back again with another episode, and I'm excited about bringing this one to you because we're going to talk all about mindset, but we're going to also talk about how you cannot sacrifice the quality of your life and and the things that we all want, the vacation lifestyle. We're going to talk about today how you can keep all of that at the forefront, right? And we got the perfect person here to tell us how exactly we can make our dreams a reality. Mr. Jabril, the man that I like to say, he's like that Batman because he's the man behind the scenes but when you see him he comes full force so without further ado please help me in welcoming him to the show mr jabril you want to say what's up to dream nation my brother yo what is up dream nation man i've had a dream for a long time and you know a lot of dreams have come true that a lot of people have doubted and i've got a lot more dreams you know to make come true not just for me but my family people who follow me. And so I'm just excited to be here with y'all Dream Nation. Let's get it. Let's get it, my brother. Now, man, I always love to start out the show and, and I try to get away from it, but I can't. And the reason why is because I compare us as entrepreneurs, thought leaders, pioneers to superheroes. And the reason being is because we're constantly, you're flying around the world. I know you are. You're putting on your cape and you're trying to solve some of the world's biggest problems. And so what we know is there's that man out there that's Superman. We see the S on the chest. We see the problems that he solved. But a lot of the times we can't describe the man that's behind the scenes, that Clark Kent. And so for a lot of people who read your articles on Black Enterprise or Ebony or Business Insider or Forbes, they see all those things and they see that Superman, but they don't know behind the scenes who is that Clark Kent. So give us a a in-depth look on who's the man behind the man. Man, that's a good question. I'm a pretty even Steven kind of person. So, you know, a lot of people kind of like, so my mentality is like it's kind of like how people if you watch the videos i'm happy probably 360 out of 365 days like Mm. i don't really have too many bad days um i know i mean it's unfortunate a lot of people do go through a lot of stuff for me i mean i just don't um i do have a few bad days but it's a lot to do with the people that you know i surround myself with but who am i behind this who is clark kent I am, uh, I mean, I'm a brother. I'm someone who, I'm definitely, I don't, I don't, I am a visionary. Like, I, I can see things. I think one of my greatest skills is being able to see things um, before other people are able to see them. And, um, and I'm also very confident in knowing to follow my own gut. It's one of the things that I've developed over time. So I'd say, Who is the Clark Kent? Man, it's just someone who can see things as well for others. Like I see things in people that a lot of times that they can't see in themselves. And then other than Mm. that, man, I I hoop. I love basketball. Man, now I'm 34. I know if I was on the court, these young boys going to run me off. Um, (laughs) I I don't, um, I like to exercise. I love to travel, but I guess people know that. And I read a lot. I love podcasts. I love to read. I love to educate myself because I love hanging. I, I love just studying people smarter than me I lo- because the world is always changing. And one thing for me is so the I mean, your question is so good. I'm also just like a, as much as I'm a dreamer, like you say, Dream Nation, I'm a realist in the fact that I really pay attention to what's going on in the world. I don't get too wrapped up in the hype of what's kind of what people say. So people be like, yo, Facebook's not even happening no more, it's dead. And I'm like, nah, man, I I literally, I hopped on the app store today and it's still the six most downloaded app, right? Just because Mm. so many people, one thing I see a lot of people do is if it's in their bubble, they'll be like, they think that's the entire world. It's like growing up, for me, like a big dream was just to go to Wisconsin Dells. That was like, the flyest trip I could take from being from Chicago. <laughs> and like, you know, we didn't, my mom, my mom didn't have a car until I was like 13, 14, right? We didn't, we took the bus, like, so, 
as far as like, I see obviously people take planes to go places. I see all these things, but it wasn't I mean, like literally the biggest dream we had was to all go to Wisconsin Dells for a weekend. And it took us like I mean, every year we'd end up we'd like, we'll go for two days. You know, you got 40 on it. I got 50 on it, whatever. And then we'd end up right. going for one day all the time. But, um, but yeah, someone else, like, I guess like the point I was just trying to make is that if you're in a bubble, in a reality, I just try and see where the world is going. And so for me, early on, the internet I saw was this way the future. I didn't care, everyone was telling me it was a fad. My family, friends and family, I'm like, nah, man, this internet thing is the way of the future. And so uh. that's... So, you, so in the beginning, people weren't on board, obviously, with everything that you was doing. You was getting a lot of pushback. You was feeling like you was an anomaly that you didn't have the environment. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. No, exactly. So how did you... So, what was that first thing then? Because that, especially coming in from Chicago, right? That the people are so adamant about their beliefs and they'll really try to tear you down if you trying to be some type of a pioneer. Like you a lame, you a sucker. Like, so for you, how did you, how was you able to get out of that to be like, nah, I got to stay the course for me? I've always, I've been pretty strong willed. I can't lie to you and say okay. that like my mindset, and it's been tough, it was definitely, it's been tough at times than others, right? So I actually had a, a very quick start. Like my first entrepreneur journey online, within the first year, you know, I was making, you know, six figures within like the first year. And I was like, man, ain't nobody telling me nothing, man. You see the money, you see the result. Like I am who I am, <laughs> you see what it is. And so that, I, I thank God that I had success out the gate. But there's this other thing called humble. And so uh, hmm. God humbled me real, not real quick. It was like after a few years, I got humbled. And so that was actually where I had to really stand on my beliefs. So, because what happened was I was on eBay before. And, yeah. and, you know, this is old school Amazon, right? People don't really do eBay like they did, you know, back now it's the Amazon ride. And so I was on eBay. And then when I, I left eBay for a bit and I was trying some other things and I was like, man, this stuff's not really working. I'm going to come back to eBay after this year. But the algorithms, everything had changed on eBay. And now looking up about a year and a half after like, because it just wasn't profitable the way it was before. Then I'm like, damn, like long story short, I had to move back in with my moms. And so to your point of like, they're like, yo, I took my mom was like, I told you, like this internet thing is a mm. fad, boy. You need to take your ass to school. Well, you need to go to school. Like, um, so I'm Nigerian, my, you know, and my mom got the act, you know, you know, I told you that internet, it's not, it's not stable or, cause obviously she loves me, uh. she just wants the best for me. But, um, right. but then when you hearing that, one of the biggest thing lessons I learned is when you ain't got no money, you ain't got no voice. You ain't got no voice mm. in the crib when you can't when you can't put up that money. You ain't paying for nothing. You gotta, and then so that was like, I had to. And I, I got my um, I actually got my first job, um, and then people were like, I mean it's so crazy. I don't if you remember Boost Mobile back in the day, like yeah Boost yeah, Mobile? man. So I, I went from T Mobile, life is good, you know, monthly bill to like I can't even afford the um, you know, the you buying bill. minutes. <laughs> bro it's like it's, prepaid <laughs> prepaid for real and then what was happening is like there were these situations where and then so it's also text messages were like 10 cents a text message then so i was like damn it like someone like i'd have like six dollars like on my account now someone's sending me like four or five texts i'm like damn man they just hit me for 50 cent like oh my god <laughs> like this yeah. is so like this is kind of like where my mom's at and my mom's you know yo you got to do this you got to do this you got to go to school and my mom like i swear to god it's a real story she was like yo why are you not why don't you want to go to school and get like a real job i was like mom it's not the it's not the way and then here's what she said i've never mm. i've never even said this she's like did you go to jail? Did you get a criminal record or something when? She was like, why don't you want, like, this is how, like, stuck in the beliefs of, like, 
yo, there's something wrong with you. What, like, I don't understand why you don't want to go to you school hiding? and get, you know, why don't you want to go to school and get this job? And I was like, yo, no, this internet is the way of the future. And she was, you know, and this is 2000, at this time, it's like 2008, right? Um, and so it's still, like, the internet is not what it is even today. And then, so this is even after I've had some success, but she's like, you know, you just got lucky kind of thing. Now you need to right. go get real. Um, she's like, what about, you know, if family, kids? If you ha I'm like, yo. And then, so that's kind of like where you said, like, the real perseverance. But I knew deep down, even though I knew I, I fucked up, like, it wasn't the internet that messed up. I messed up. And I right. just had to figure out how to, you know, work the internet um, to my will. Yo, so it's so crazy. And I'm glad you told that backstory because somebody else is listening right now. And they're like, yo, that's exactly what my dad just said to me last week. I'm on the Amazon train, right? And somebody's thinking that way right now. Where I just jumped into podcasts and they like, what even is a podcast? Like, where do you even find them? That's not real. You know, so, it's, so it's, I'm glad that you said that. Now, my question to you is, to, to stay motivated, to stay on your journey though, what was the thing that you turned to? Was it a YouTube channel? Was it a book that you were reading every day? Did you join a coaching program? What kept you afloat that you didn't crack? Yo, that is a, that's a great question. Nobody's re really asked me it like that. And I tell you, man, there was a few things. On, I'd be on YouTube almost like every day I'd be t searching um, like Will Smith videos like the motivational yeah. videos and it, it's like you know it'd be um him like so Chris Gardner like a uh, pursuit of happiness I'd be watching mm -hmm. like that where he's like um I'd be watching those videos I'd be watching Les Brown Jim Rohn all these oh, yeah. videos on um on YouTube and then I'd be listening to you know to Jim Rohn and his story or I, I was listening to uh Rocky uh, and then where Tony Robbins was uh, telling um, Sylvester Stallone's story and then how it got so bad he had to sell his dog. Cause like, here's the things I'm going through. Like I'm at Aldi's with like $10. Like I wasn't on any government assistance or anything. Like, and so I'm at Aldi's with like, damn, I got $10. I'm like, what am I going to get today? Am I going to get the juice or am I going to get the eggs? And then while I'm just like, I'm trying to be this person of success. And I, and I had success before. So it's like, in my mind, I have to stay so strong right. with, and then I got some of my, you know, I hear some peers snickering, talking, like basically talking shit like, oh man, what's up, man? This, you know, cause I'm like, nah, this is where I'm going, but that's not my reality, right? I'm talking about where I'm going or where I'm going back to, but my reality is not, I sold my cars that I had before, my shoe collection that I had, I put all them things on eBay and I'm back at home, you know, with my mom. So the things that I'm talking about, not matching up to where I'm saying I'm going, right? So right. I just got to sit, you know, by myself with my go cards. Like, it's actually funny, I posted on Instagram a, a picture of my old room, my bedroom, and I've had goals on my wall since I've been like 16 years old, right? And mm. I think people like think I'm like talking, I was like, and I found one of the old pictures, I like literally like the go cards and everything on the wall. And so my mindset with that, and then another big shout out is, uh, is to my cousin. Um, my cousin's actually a fairly big musician now, Malik Berry. He's like one of the biggest Afrobeat artists in the world. And so our moms are sisters. And we are the two dreamers in the family. The two crazy ones that's mm. like, yo, this will, now, you know, you, you know, you go search Malik Berry, my cousin, 100 million views for the videos, you know, on YouTube and stuff. Right. Crazy, 20,000 people in the arena, in the arena before Rona and stuff. Like, um, but what we was, but back then, we was just talking about, you know, personal development, staying strong, staying vision. So him, he graduated with a degree in computer science, right? And he had to take a part-time, he's had a part-time job at The Gap just to keep things moving so he could have a flexible schedule with music. And so we would just go back and forth on Skype, literally every single day. So he was like my, kind of my, one of my training partners as far as like mindset to keep going. Cause you might, it's a lot. And so th when I actually keep going back in my head, I was like, yeah, I didn't do this shit alone. Like that was a right. big part of like someone as crazy as me dreaming. Now it's like, everyone's like, oh my God, we so proud of you. Da -da 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 and um, it's great, it's a great feeling, but it's like, 
man, the shit that we went through to get like to where we are, just those conversations literally daily of just everything, you know, going like, yo, watch this Will Smith. I'll be sending him a Will Smith. We'd be watching even Tyrese back in the day. Tyrese was always on this motivational stuff on Twitter. Like we right. just all that stuff just to keep our mind fresh. So man, that's a good question. Cause those are the things J Cole, I'd listen to J Cole. Um, Dollar in the dream. Man, you know, racks, all these things, man. Music was one of these things that really got me think through things as well. Music, man. Like just, ah, oh, man, you bringing things out of me, man. Like just going back <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> Absolutely, my brother. We all need it. And that's funny, man, because the Will Smith videos, pursue, I always talk about pursuit of happiness, right? And especially me not having a young son, right? My son's nine. And, I'm, and it's the one thing I, I get chills right now, even just thinking about that moment where he tells his son, and I've told my son so many times, like, don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do something. Not me. Not, not anybody. You know, when he's talking to his son and down the gate, don't ever let anybody yeah, try to be through your dream. Right? Like, not me, not anybody. Don't ever let anybody tell you can't do it. And so I've said that to my son so many a times. So I'm, I love that you brought that up, man. It's, it's so powerful. And just having that one person that you can call when things aren't going right in your morning. I mean, I know that I've developed these people and I've just seek, I've sought them out, but just those people that's going to check you. But at the same time, every single time when you're down and, and it's funny because we got a mutual boy, Neo, right? And I remember, I'll never forget it. But one of the things Neo told me, this was early on when we first connected. He said, bro, when you in your head, you're losing bread, right? And I was like, oh, man. And so that's one of the times when I'm in my head, I'm always like, bro, you just take action on something. Take action on something, man. So I love it. Now, talk to me about where what, you always was a fan of traveling, right? You said the Wisconsin Dells. But where did it become like, yo, I could do this and still make a living? Because I, I think I read one time and I was reading about the eBay and everything. So I, I love that you brought that up. But you also said like most people when they travel the world, you know, for two, three months, they come back broke because they've spent all their money. You said, but you figured out a way where you could travel the world. You come back richer than you ever were mentally, spiritually, but also financially. Where did that become a reality for you? Did you have a mentor with that? Or like, did you, it was just a, you just happened to catch a lick while you was out traveling one time? Uh, good question. Uh, combination of several things. Like, you know, I was working online before, so I was like, yo, I got the internet. But it, it, mm -hmm. it was also a thing of like mindset because a lot of people might have all the things that they do, but they can't get there mentally. Right to like, yo, I could actually live somewhere like this for three months. Like, it's it's, it's a big mental thing as well. Um, right. As far as you know, as, as well as the logistics of it all. And so, what I I ended up doing, um, also like the I'm sure you maybe you've heard of like the the four hour work week um, by yeah. Tim Ferriss. So that I was peeping that. So that became your Bible. That, <laughs> that um, became a Bible for you. It, it was definitely influential. I won't call it my Bible, but it was definitely influential. Then um, okay. my friends Brian and Rhonda Swan, they um, they set off on a one year trip around the world, and they're like, "Yo," I was like, "Okay, um, I'm a, I could do something like that." And I went to go visit them in Hawaii, and I was like, "Huh? They really?" They really not going home. And so <laughs> they was taking off for Fiji. And I was, so I was going back to Chicago, right? So this 2010, like uh, February, January, 2010. And I'm like taking, the, I'm in shape, right? You know, I'm running, you know, I get the heads turning, you know, I'm running with my shirt off. I'm like, yo, man, I like this out here in Hawaii. And then, so it's about three hours before my flight, and I'm like, I'm really about to fly back to the shot. It's snowing, it's crazy out there. And I was like, I don't really have to. I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving. And so like in that moment, I was like, man, forget the flight, flight, like I'm staying. And then I ended up staying in Hawaii for like three months. After, you know, I went to Fiji. And that was like the real start of my, you know, trip around the world. And so now, like, I'm out here in Asia right now while I'm talking to you. Um, you know, I got, I got places back in the States too, but it's like, I love to be 
uh, international. So that's what it was um, for me. And I realized for me, there's no joy. I'm so competitive, like <laughs> I am competitive. So the whole just save some money, go travel and come back and have to rebuild, that never excited me. I wanted to be growing. If I couldn't grow, you know, financially, spiritually, all these things, while I'm traveling, it didn't, it didn't interest me. I don't want to just see some pretty place and I'm not being productive and like having some kind of impact. And so I knew with the internet, I could still continue to build my businesses and do everything while I'm traveling. So that's what excited me about seeing the world and still working. Because without it, I'm like, I'd rather be at home. Like, I, I want to I continue working and be productive. So, but with that, I was like, man. And then I'd be in places like Thailand, right? I'm like, yo, I got a fly ass apartment out here. It's $300 a month for the same type of, you know, you know, like the, the joints like downtown with the doorman, you got the pool, right. you got the gym, all that, $300 a month. And in Chicago, I'm paying like 2,700, you know, um, you know, 2,800 a month for the same kind of joint. And I was like, bet, run that. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going I'm to keep doing this for a little bit. Yeah, man. And so, so did you already have an established online business back in 2010 mm -hmm. when you made this decision? Uh-huh. Yeah. Got it. Cause like, I mean, for somebody else that says that and they like, yo, but if, if, if I, right now, if somebody hears or they're watching this right now and they say, yo, I'm in Hawaii right now and I don't want to go back home. Right. Could you have made that decision and still figured it out to be able to not have to go back home? What would have been that thing that you would have done? Because you were already you didn't need to. But for somebody else that wants to take that, what can they do? I say, you know what your bank account does. Um, if your bank account says run the f back home, I'd probably go back home and then, you know, take the trip. Don't put yourself in no financial predicament. I'm trying to sign some Instagram picture saying I'm talking nah. Take your ass back home, <laughs> stack up, <laughs> build, be responsible, and then, <laughs> and then you know, then do your thing. I would, I'd have been, I'd have been back if I didn't have something moving. I'm not the kind of people that's like, oh, I'm just gonna. Nah, I'm like, wing I'm it. Not, <laughs> nah, I want. You make a calculated decision. Yeah, I'm making real calculated. Decisions. I'm not one of these just. Whew, hell, man. Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, no, I, I I respect it, and I'm sure somebody's gonna be able to have that as well, that perspective to be like, yo, he's not reckless, right? Because th that's the thing. I think a lot of people they struggle with they they want to go after that passion of traveling the world and everything, but at the same time, they feel like that they would be reckless, right? And so being able to hear that, obviously, they can look deeper into your journey and be like, nah, he did it, calculated. So there's a way that I could probably do this on a calculated yeah. method. And these days, though, it's easier than ever. You know, you're talking about, this is 2010. Now, obviously, with, you know, the unfortunate Rona and, uh, you know, COVID-19 and everything, but a lot of people are working remote. So here's the thing I tell somebody, like, if you was working remote and this is one of your dreams and your company's allowing you to work remote and you paying $2,000 a month, $1,800 a month for whatever, for your, just your rent and you got your car note, you got all these things, cut it. And, you know, take that trip because your money is still going to be flowing and then you can build your business. Because I think one of the things that alleviated, like, pretty much um, when they be like, money don't buy happiness, mm, partially. Um, <laughs> I know I'm a lot happier with <laughs> me to do all this stuff. Right. I, I, I don't even know who would be saying Poverty that. Poverty can't I'm buy like, you nothing, though. <laughs> I, and I'm like, yo, just, but it's like, I think there's like that thing of like, once you get to a certain level, like, um, or it's like when I made like the first million in a month, I wasn't like, I was like, yeah, it didn't really, like I was showing my girl, I was like, yeah, it don't even, it, I was more excited for like the first like $30,000 day or something or like $30,000 a month because it was so much more transformative, you know, transforming to my life. You know, this was just, we're just building, 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 and you know, then it comes along. And so, but if you can go and be in a place where and and you can work and then it's like yo your, your your expenses are way lower and for me mentality for me is like that peace of mind where you're not like oh oh can i do this it, it just opens up another layer of um you know of freedom in your mind where you're not really stressing so like for example in some of these places i've named if it's like in 
you know, Thailand or Bali or if you're in Colombia, right? You're able to do, you know, live a, let's say you have like a $5,000 a month lifestyle in, um, in Chicago. You could do that mm -hmm. for like 12, $1,200, $1,500 um, a month, right? In like in Colombia or something. And so now that, when you're building your business is a completely different mindset, right? And I, I do like when you have to make stuff happen because that's another thing, right? Where it's like, I gotta make it happen. But it's also like, because when people are in these desperation situations need to make stuff, and it's like, I don't even always think they're the best, right? You might make some ill decisions. You're like, oh, you might do this. But when you're like, okay, cool, I can build something, um, you know, while you're in these beautiful environments, beautiful cultures, um, I'm like, I tell people to take all advantage of you, um, take advantage of it while you can right now. Like I'm a big advocate for this new nomad lifestyle. Um, you know, it's, and you can, there's so much opportunity out here. You could be living, you had so to build much it, them. Let, let me ask you, if you had to build and knowing everything that you know now, you've traveled all over, you've been a nomad for, for years now, right? And you've built a comfortable lifestyle. If for whatever reason you lost it all and you had to start all over again, what's the avenue that you're going to take? Man, I am... Um, no. I'm probably make sure I'm in the gym, make sure my girl real bad, put her on Instagram, and we're gonna get these influencer checks now. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, nah, let me. Um, but in all seriousness, like if I lost everything with the knowledge that I have right now, I would either. So I would look at you know what industries are moving, like probably maybe the financial industry. Um, it'd be some type of like affiliate marketing. Um, so that way um, I don't have to have a lot of money to, you know, get started. I'd be, start writing content. I'd write blogs or if it's YouTube videos. Uh, and then, you know, as I get my affiliate income, then I would start to, you know, build my own products. But I would definitely start in something, you know, affiliate related or if I was good at building apps and um, you know, you know, getting data, or it's like um, I'd run like I start running Facebook ads, right, for people that I know have a good product or service, and then I would scale up their businesses really quickly, take my cut, and then once I got my, you know enough cash for my own stuff, I start building out my own thing. But there's so many different ways I'd do it, but um, definitely leaning in with someone else um, is, is what I would do on the affiliate side and build from there because you don't need really any money to do that. You just need the skills um, and the mindset. And you can literally, you could make make seven figures doing that. Like I could, like you just drop me off, no money, no anything. I'm like, all right, cool. With the knowledge I had, 12 months, I'm back, living, easy. Back. It's funny, I thought you might have said like it because you mentioned Amazon in the beginning. And I think a lot of people are looking to get their start in the online world, right? Because they want that nomad lifestyle or they just want the lifestyle where they feel like they don't have to take a vacation, right, to, to get what they want. And so a lot of the times people ask me, like, how would you get started? Would you go to podcast route or would you go Amazon? So I was interested to hear what you would say, seeing as you've been exposed to so many different avenues. Yeah. So, no, that's good. So talk to me about, because is, is, when I first heard about you, we were talking about this before we hopped on live, mm -hmm. and I was telling you that uh, Tiffany, right, was a sister to both of us, Tiffany, the, the budgetista, she was the first one who told me about you. And she was like, yo, I was like, I think I asked her, what was the question I asked her? I said, uh, she, I said, if you were trying to build a business or something, like, what would you do? And her response was like, find a Jabril. Right. And this was the first time I was like, well, who, who's Jabril? Like, what? And then she was like, yo, that was the thing that really just took me to the next level. Like I was already doing well. And so I guess what was the thing first off that you saw in her? How did you get the connection with Tiffany? And, and what was the way that you allowed her to scale? Man, great question. So we was inside a, a travel group called Nomadness Travel Tribe. So um, shout out to Evita Robinson. Um, I always owe you drinks for, you know, just, she's brought me together with so many amazing people. So it's, she has a group, like I said, called Nomadness Travel Tribe. 
And so we were both inside of this group. And so we just saw each other for years inside the group. We'd always just kind of talk um, and kind of connect. I'm like, now nah, I'm out of focus. Let me move back a little bit. Let me move. <laughs> um, and then so when we was in there, and then I won Entrepreneur of the Year, I think it was like in 2013, uh, something in there. And then she won in like 2014. And then uh, we were just talking. And then I was like, yo, what's up? You know, how you doing? We was talking a little bit more on the phone and, uh, you know, about her business. Because I saw, and the one thing that I loved about her is um, I could tell that she, she gave up. Like she really right. cared about people. It wasn't, you know, right. a lot of people were like, money, 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 money. And I'm like, I just, it's not my vibe. Like, I like to do some fly stuff, but when people is just always talking about the money and this and that, I'm like, that's cool, bro. But that's not how I rock. And I could tell she cared more about the people than the money, you know, that could mm -hmm. be made. And so that was like the thing that really attracted me to Tiffany. And so from there, I was like, yo, cause she was, I think she just broke like, like a hundred thousand, 120,000 a year or so um, at that time. And then she was like, you know, this is what I'm doing. I'm like, what are you doing online? She's like, I don't do anything, you know, online. This is when she was starting her first challenge, um, you know, Live Richer um, Challenge. And so making no money, but she had her books and she would do speaking engagements. That's how she's like, I would like, cause she just met her now husband, uh, well, didn't just meet him, they, you know, they were starting to get a bit more serious. Uh, you know, Jarrell Superman as the, the world knows him. And she was like, I want to be able to spend more time with him. And I don't want to have to leave all the time if I don't want to. And I was like, yo, she's like, what are you doing online? She's like, I don't really do nothing. I was like, yo, what about affiliate marketing? She's like, what's that? Um, and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and I was like, we could create like a membership site as well. And she was like, I'm like, and this is like, you know what we could do, we could make, you know, make a lot, like, and have a lot of impact and help a lot of people. She's like, you really think that's possible? I was like, I know it is. She's like, mm, yeah, okay. She's like, she thought I was hyping. She's like, man, oh, that's not possible. So I was like, and then so it took, uh, what took four years to build the email list of 10,000 people, right? And a Facebook group, the dream catchers, which are amazing. Um, yeah. And, th and then, uh, and then her Facebook page to 10,000, not in the next four months when I came on. And that was another thing. I was like, yo, you use Facebook ads. She's like, what? You want to spend $150 a week? Uh-uh. Like, I, I, she's like, they call me the budget for a reason. Like I'm getting free stuff. Like that don't, I was like, forget, don't worry. I put my credit card on file. So I put my credit card on file and then we got busy. Now the next four months we went from, uh, 10,000 in the, um, the Dreamcatcher group to 80,000. The email mm -hmm. list went from 10,000 to 80,000. From the right? challenges? Yeah, because of the ads and stuff that I was running from the ads. Yeah. And then, and then the email list, Facebook group, Facebook fan page, it was like, you know, symmetrical, 80,000, 80,000. And so it, it literally grew um, 70,000 people within the four months. So now he's at 80,000. Former, and she's like, yo, who the fuck are you? What is right. this? How? And um, then we launched the Live Richer Academy in um, March of 2016. And that's when she was like, yo. I was like, yo, we could probably do about 50, 60 this week. And she's like, oh, you really think it's going to be that crazy? I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, I don't know. I was like, no, nah, like, like, like. You that you that girl like we we go about to do this and then right. first hour first hour twenty seven thousand she was like yo this is crazy <laughs> we I never we was in the uh, cause we was in the halfway hood we was at like cause I, I went to her house in Jersey cause I was like I want to be together when we launch it I still got the picture I mean the video of like us like in a little uh, you know two bedroom little townhouse in the hood. Um, and then uh, she was just like, yo, this is like when you know, see the stripe just like refresh. It was like, because like, not literally, because like the first, it must have been the first 10 minutes, it was probably, 
thing is like 10,000 first 10 minutes and then that first hour just refresh oh my god 12,000 dude 14,000 and then first hour 27,000 she was like yo this is yo. and that obviously seeing is believing and then her mind was just expanded like yo this is like what's possible and um you know since you know we've got a lot more busy you know we've grown we right failed. but like those moments were so exciting like when we right. had like our first million dollar month you know even that was even during the pandemic like first million dollar month we had that was april uh 2020 right right when the you know kind of because we was getting busy because i didn't have nothing to do so we we was just you know getting busy and um you know it's just obviously continued to grow since then but it was like i said it, it wasn't as exciting as like the 20 like the 27. it wasn't as exciting right yeah it that first like, that that initial like, impact yeah. turning a dream into a reality right that's what it's like all about and so man kudos to you for sticking through it and being like yo we can do it but kudos to her as well for being like yo you you really think it's possible like but what do we got to lose, right? It feels like it's a calculated risk going back to that, right? And, and, and I mean, I got skin in the game. You got skin in the game. I said I'm going to do my part. I know you're going to do your part. Let's see what we can make some shake. And that's where it all comes down to, man. So salute to both of y'all. I mean, that's super, super dope. And I'm sure somebody else is hearing the story and they like, wow, like, it's crazy. Because I think that's what a lot of people, they're just looking for that even initial rush to see that, like, yo, it's possible. Right. Like I always say, I go back to that. Even when I was first writing out my list of people I wanted on the podcast. Right. And, and it was starting with the end in mind. But it was like then the moment that like Grant Cardone was like, yo, I'm going to do it. Or even Jack Canfield for me was big into we talked about Jim Rohn. Right. I was like, yo, he really got he going to come on. And then all of a sudden it's those like five minutes before it's like showtime. And you're like, yo, is he going to show up? Is, is he going to ditch me? Like, yo. And then he shows up. And then all of a sudden you you talking for an hour and a half and you like yo he ch like it's crazy so man salute to both of y'all that's that's phenomenal let me ask know everything that you know now if there was one thing that you wish that you would have implemented sooner to accelerate the path on your journey and your dream to where you are today now what would that one thing be um I would say probably more consistency and discipline. Uh, hmm. More consistency and discipline. Because that's where the real magic happens is like when you're just consisting at it, like day in, day out, you're continuing, you know, you're continuously working. And then you catch momentum, right? You, it's like, because you can't catch momentum if you're not doing the thing on a regular basis. So um, one of, I'd say one of my kryptonites is that boy love to have fun and uh, enjoy himself to the max. And so I, uh, yeah, I'd say consistency um, is, is, the, is a big thing. For Just me. not getting too comfortable. Is that what you're saying? Right, like, like making sure that you stay hungry making sure that every single day you find something that can motivate you, that can inspire you to go out there and try to reach another level. Like, absolutely, you have to. And it's like, if you don't, you, you will be humbled at some point. Cause I see, um, you know, I see so many people fall off because they, they get too confident. Uh, once I need to plug in, so we don't, uh, <laughs> okay, I need to plug in there. Um, but uh, but yeah, that would be it. That, that's like the big thing for me. And I know it, um, people are like, yo, that, but like, nah, it's like you stay consistent, you do your thing, uh, you know, anything's possible. I mean, obviously, in doing the right thing, you gotta be doing the right thing, but that, that's what it would be for me. I wish, like, I would have. If I did that a bit more, it's like I could have been. But then again, I love to have fun. So I, I, I don't have no regrets, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I love my life. <laughs> so it's a tough question. No, man, man. I, I love question. it. 
So let me ask it being all the places that you've been and all of the dope people that you've met thus far, if there was one person, whether it's dead or alive, that you could have lunch with, who's that one person? And what's the one, the main question that you would want to ask that person? When I ask people these type of questions, I never have an answer myself. I, I, I'd say someone, I don't even have a question that I would ask like an, an individual, but it'd be someone like Cole, man. I really, I just, just vibe out with Cole. I feel like, cause I have, not that I'm saying I know everything, but I feel like I have a lot of the answers that I need within myself. And so, I, I feel great power in just knowing that I trust myself. Um, and then the certain times, like I hop on YouTube if I need to find something, I listen to a podcast. I don't necessarily need to sit down with somebody, but I just would like to hang out with fun people. I know that's not the, the personal development answer, man. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I oh, no, and it's so myself. good. I just always... Yeah, I love to hear it because some people they have, you know, we've had people that said Jesus, we've had people that said Gandhi, right? And all those things, but just like, what's that question? You know, like, and, you know, you said Will Smith, right? And obviously we've seen Will Smith has inspired us for so much. And if, if Will Smith's walking by and it's like, yo, like if you had to ask him one question to be able to get him to reveal everything that's worked for him. And yes, you can hop on YouTube, but there's something that we always want to know. Like, yo, I, I would, if I could ask him one thing, what would that thing be? You know, you, you don't ever think like that? No, not really, man. Like, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I really don't. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I feel like, cause I feel like I'm, well, I, I don't know. It's like the people that I'm, meet, I'm meant to meet, I meet, and then I was like, I'll be thinking about just having a few drinks with people and then these conversations naturally come. Like, I'm really, I'm, like, yo, I, I'll, be, I'll be chilling with home one day, right? It's like, these things will happen. So I don't, I don't, it sounds crazy, right? But it's like, I don't, yeah, I just don't think like, I'm not like, oh, my life. I'm just like, when I, when they run through them, like, yo, what's up, your bro, man? I've been watching you for a minute. Like, that's how my mind works. So I, I just, but I get your thing, but I'm just like, if there's one thing, I don't know, maybe it's like a, maybe a fitness person. I'm like, bro, how do you, how do your abs stay popping all year, man? And why you try, I don't know. <laughs> I got, I'm really, I wish I was oh, like, good, my brother. <laughs> I, it, I it's so good, one day. I Cole would be a dope person, though. Yeah, I just, you know, with Cole, let me think. For real, if I had to ask Cole one question, um, I would just say, how, how do you, yeah, I'd say, maybe, maybe it's that question, yeah, how do you learn how to trust yourself? Um, maybe something like that, like, how do you, because everything, I think every true creative and genius, everything's about trusting yourself and knowing where you don't have to really look for outside guidance or what, you know, is cool is whatever, Grant Cardone, all these people. I'm like, I don't really care what they do. Um, it's like right. that, like you get a basis and a foundation and then I'm like, I have this supreme belief in myself. I'm just like, it's not like ego, but I'm just like, I don't know. But you learn a lot. I learn a lot, though. Like, on the contrary, though, if I'm around people that are smarter than me and shut I'm just like, I'm just shutting up and just listening. So I, I do take a lot from people when they're smart or if I'm learning. They're talking about real estate. If Grant's talking about real estate, I'm like, I don't know what you know. Go ahead and talk, Grant. I'm listening. You know, what's right. it called? Ray Dalio's talking about stocks. Hey, go ahead. Talk your head up. I'm... I'm I'm not saying listen. Nothing. You talking to me about real estate? Uh, you, you got me? You talking to me about real estate? I'm like, yo, Casanova talking to me about real estate. I ain't got nothing to say. Yo, just talk for now. I'm trying to soak up Casanova again, you know? Like, right. I, I, you know, I'm always trying to soak up game. So, man, I want to do that too. I'm like, I'm calling you. I'm like, Casanova, what do you think about this real estate deal, man? I know you rookie of the year. You were vetting the game right now. You know, I need to soak up some of that Casanova game.
Man, it, it's been a pleasure, man. That's what I do. I, I get the information and I just try to give it to all my people. And uh, yeah, man, we'll definitely talk more about that. This has been a phenomenal conversation, my brother. The last question that I got for you is, there's somebody that's out there right now that they're inspired by your journey. Not only me, my brother, and they're proud of you and they wanna blaze a similar path to something that you've already done, uh, but they have that little voice in their head and that little voice says that they're not strong enough, they're not smart enough, or maybe they just don't have enough resources. What's that one final thing that you would leave that person with to get them to just take action? Um, you, sometimes you just got to take a chance on yourself because if you don't, um, as cliche as it sounds, you're just going to always say, what if? Uh, you, you just have to. And everything, I'll say this, right? I'll go back to even, so sometimes, People might even hear big numbers like, oh my God, a million in a month, I can't even imagine, right? Um, everything starts small and everything's one step at a time. You know, we started uh, with, you know, spending $100 a week and we made some profit, then we reinvested back in, into the business. You know, it, it was, it's like one brick at a time, you know, kind of like Will Smith says, there's this video, he's like, you know, it looks crazy, you know, this big wall or big building completed, but the thing is, it's one brick at a time, and then when you actually look up, you know, with the consistency, you're like, damn, look, look what I've accomplished, and that's kind of how it comes. So don't overthink things and think it's, oh, it's so far away, these people are so grand. I used to put people on the pedestal too. I used to be like nervous. I remember when I first met some of my heroes, I was like, <gasps> That's like, I was playing it cool, but I was like, oh my God, that's what's a card over there. Like, and so I've been through a lot of the same, you know, the same things, but everything's just a process. Um, you're human, just like I am. I, like you, everyone has a gift to take them to the promise line. And I believe that in my absolute soul, you have the gift to take yourself to the promised land, take your life to heights to, you maybe not even have dreamed possible, I promise you, but it's like, just step at a time, you know, take it one step at a time and anything is possible because it gets overwhelming, right? And you're gonna have these ups and downs, but uh, you know, keep that mind strong, watch those YouTube videos. Now, keep listening, you know, to Dream Nation, right? All these things help you along this journey and then be very, very selective on who you give your energy to and who you allow in your space. It's been one of the things that, you know, keeps me so happy, um, keeps me so positive, is that I am very selective who I allow to have my energy and who I give my energy to because those little slick comments that people can have, they're not nice, they don't feel good, they, they don't move you forward to where you wanna go and I've never been afraid to, you know, cut people out. I'm like, hey man, I don't appreciate that. Like, you keep rocking like that, we ain't gonna be rocking no more because where I'm going, mm -hmm. I don't have no, I don't have no time for that. Like, I'm going places, and it's like either you're gonna be a positive, you know, person in my corner, and you're gonna be thinking about how we can have solutions together. And you know, it's like you know, if you're in the gym, and it's like the person's like, <laughs> you, why you know you can't do? That. Well, they're like, yo, no, let's get this. Let's do. Like I'm telling you, that is like one of the most important things, man. Be so careful who you surround yourself with. Um, my mom always say that too. Well, be careful who you hang out with. Like, and it's so true, man. It's like one of the biggest secrets to success, happiness, and just like that mental clarity because. And then the wrong people can literally, I mean, they can do so much, you know, to, to set you off the path. Like, it could be the wrong spouse, you know, it could be the wrong, all these different things, but it's those people. And I say, and then here's the thing, you are responsible. Yes, you gotta take personal responsibility. Oh man, but this, but hey, nobody's forcing you to spend time with these people. You are making a choice. As hard as it is for some, you know, obviously some situations are harder than others, but you, you're gonna have to be the one looking back at your life when you're 70, 80, and saying, man, 
I, I wish I would have done that. No, that, that's you. That's your fault. It's like, you can't be like, oh, right. man, because my, you know, this and that. No, that's your fault. <laughs> you didn't make the change. Um, and that's how I've always looked at my life. I'm always trying to take as much personal responsibility for, you know, where I am and the things that I'm doing. And I'll say it for the 10th time, be careful who you surround yourself with. I love it, man. Man, this is phenomenal conversation. I'm so excited to share this definitely with the world, my brother. Um, for, we'll make sure that we put all of the show notes or the links in the show notes. But for anybody who wants to stay connected with you, uh, tell them, where can they find you at? Um, good question. So YouTube, I'm on Passport Heavy. So like a passport and then the weight heavy. And so I liked, and then on there, what you're going to find is travel documentaries um all about you know the places that i go around the world and we make them because basically not everyone has a jay-z budget and so i like to break down places and say hey it's not as expensive as you think here's the cost of accommodations and then here are the things that you can do and places are not as scary as you may think and you might be more mm -hmm. accepted than you even think um in these different cultures around the world so passport heavy on youtube oh yeah we on tv now as well so if you're on the East Coast, um, so if you got Verizon Fios, so Charter One out in New York, I'm the War TV, so we on TV, and then uh, on Instagram, I'm always on Instagram, uh, Jabril8, so like you see my name, Jabril8 on Instagram, and then you know the other platforms, uh, Facebook, but um, I use it a little bit, and Twitter, um, it's, just, it's just Jabril. So those are the places that you can find me, and uh, yeah, I, 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 I respond to as much as I can, pretty much if you message, and I've got time, I really take time out to, to respond because I know how it feels. I think one of the greatest human's desires is to be acknowledged. And so if I can, in my, if it's humanly possible for me, I will go in the inbox. And sometimes I send, I send video replies to people as well. And they're like, oh my God, I didn't think you were going to reply. I was like, yeah, because I know how it feels to reach out to someone and someone doesn't you know, reach back. And sometimes you might have to send three messages like, but if it's in my capacity, I love to, you know, and I'll give you one tip as well. Please do not just say hi or hello. Say who you are, what you're about, or even you found me here, or something that you're looking to work on, or some specific question. So the worst, because the worst are like, what I don't reply to is just, hi, hello, what's up? Like, so that would be my advice if you're reaching out to as well. I love it. I love it. Well, just as he said, Dream Nation, you got to take ownership of your situation and at the same time, protect your energy. But above all, you got to execute because otherwise that dream that you have, as we all know, will only merely be a fantasy if you do not execute. So that's all for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. That's all we got for this episode. Thank you for sticking around. That truly means a lot to me. And hopefully that means that we delivered massive value on this one. If you haven't already, the way that you could say thank you to myself and the team is just by heading over to iTunes and leaving a review and a rating. That's what iTunes loves to see. That's how we get out there even more. And I would definitely, definitely be grateful for it. I know the team would as well. Do me a favor and head on over to dreamnationpodcast.com. That's where you're going to be able to find all of the resources that we talked about in today's episode, as well as more exclusive content. And you'll also be able to sign up to our email list where we have more exclusive content. And we always love to hear the feedback from you all because you're our tribe. So remember, in the dream we trust, we'll see you on the flip side.